my name is Lisa Dabbs, and I am a former school principal, and I am now an education consultant and an adjunct professor. And I'm very fortunate to be able to work with the ViewSonic team and present in the booth for them at different events to share with all of you as, as a former, in, I was also a teacher, so as a former in-class educator, sharing with you the beauty of using a tool like this board in your classroom. And even if you're not here for the board, as I share some things with you, you might say, I don't care about the board, but that's a great tool I didn't know about using, okay? So today I'm going to share a few different presentations on um, using tools. But mostly what ViewSonic is about, and we all are about as educators, is collaboration. So the real theme in my presentation today is to do things to collaborate more. And one of the things we talk about often is that we as teachers, we as educators, sometimes feel like still we need to be that fount of knowledge instead of letting our kids take the stage and really play around with tools rather than us saying, here's a tool and this is how you use it. So I'm hoping that as I go through these five tools, you'll think about if you know some of them, great. If you don't, how you might use them in your classroom with your students, okay? And then you get to see the kind of fun, tricky things that this board does, okay? So that's a little bit about me. I love using social media. And at the end of the presentation, you'll see that I'm at Teach With Soul. And really what I want to talk about is what kind of tech tools are you using? So in the old days, we really relied a lot on software pieces. And now we look more at the tools that integrate with our pedagogy and how we can use them to support our teaching practice, right? And I say recraft your process because a lot of us, of course, I'm a veteran teacher, but even younger teachers, unfortunately, sometimes will come to the classroom with that older mindset, not because they're old here, but because at the university, I'm not one of those professors, but there's many univers uh, university professors who are still coming from, see, stuck in the older mindsets. So recrafting the process is important, right? And then when you look at the kind of technology that you have at your schools, sometimes when I'm presenting, teachers will say, but Lisa, we don't have that at my school. So I can't help you with that, but what I would say to you, and something that I did with my teachers when I was a principal is, you need to advocate for the things that you want, right? Easy to say, harder to do maybe, but I advocated as a principal back in the day for improved infrastructure because our um, inter internet was so slow. So that's a little baby step, but it's something, right? So is it time to reboot? Some of us would say, yes! Okay. And I even brought whiteboards to my school. Imagine back in the day, because my teachers were still using chalkboards. And it, you know, it wasn't the 1960s, it was the mid 2000s. So um, it's important to think about what kinds of structures, what kind of tools can we think about rebooting or our own pedagogy, right? Super important. So I want to look at five kind of newish tools. The first one is Flipgrid. Now, Flipgrid had a big party poolside last night. I don't know if some of you saw it, but Flipgrid is an app. It's web-based. You can create a grid, pose a question, and have interactive, collaborative dialogue with your students. So let's take a quick look at it, okay? So one of my very good friends is one of my mentees, and her name is Christine Pinto. She'll actually be here tomorrow. She and I collaborated using Flipgrid in a chat format because I am the founder of New Teacher Chat, and I started that in 2010. And in 2017, I canceled the chat after doing it for seven years, and we decided to try moving it into an application, so we tried to reboot New Teacher Chat, and we actually moved it into Flipgrid. So, are all of you familiar with Flipgrid? No, okay, okay, cool. So let me just show you really quickly, because I don't want the presentation to be 25 minutes long. So I'll show you a little bit of how it works. So we created a grid, posed a question once a week for our chat, 
and folks came in and collaborated on the Flipgrid app and shared their ideas. So in the classroom, that's something that you can do. And it's so much fun because you can keep it private or you can share it. The kids have an opportunity to collaborate with each other. And then, and then they have the option to respond to each other. So you as a teacher can pose a question, kids jump in and respond, and then other kids can respond to their student, the fellow students. So it becomes very collaborative, okay? Really great. All right. Okay. Insert learning, very cool tool. You can add it as an extension to Chrome if you're a Chrome user, and it turns a website into an interactive lesson. Okay, so let me show you how. So you can take it and add elements to the website and actually build out a lesson plan using that application. So teachers would use this, not students. Right. Well, once you set it up, then students can respond. You can set up questions, and students can actually respond to the question. Just working off of a website, which makes it really cool. Okay. And you can see as I'm doing this, the idea is it's pretty seamless as you start to present using the board. Okay, have any of you used AutoDraw? It's part of Google Tools, so let me show you. This one's really great. It uses AI to guess what you're trying to draw. I can't draw. If some of you can, you're very fortunate. But as I draw a head with ears and a body, Google tries to figure out what I'm drawing, and probably more than likely I'm trying to draw a cat, so it's super cool. And it will actually give you choices. Are you drawing a cat, a bunny? So, let me show you. It's a drawing tool for the rest of us. Autodraw appears the magic of machine learning, where it drawings with the talented artist to help you draw stuff you So you get the idea, right? It's really, really cool. You go to the Autodraw site for your phone and so later on when you get home, I want you to try it out, okay? So AutoDraw uses AI, and here's another great tool. Anybody ever seen um, Museum ED? Have you? Okay. So let's take a look at it. One of the things that is really great about Museum is the main aspect is the idea that we are putting a stop to fake news, right? Which is very important for us in the classroom. So children have a question about what's going on in the world. You can take them to Museum Ed and ask them to figure it out for themselves. Is that really true? Is that really accurate? Let's see. Let's check it out. And it gives you beautiful access to hundreds of thousands of documented pieces that you can use when you teach. And obviously you can search in Museum Ed. And you don't have to be the one doing it, right? Let the kids figure it out, find it, and search it. So it's a really, really great tool. Book Creator? Anybody use Book Creator? Yeah? Okay, let's take a look at it. So, I used to use an application called Storybird and I really liked it. Yeah, okay, but Book Creator gives us really a lot more opportunities to create, to read, and publish. Beyond what you could do in Storybird, which is using the images that are already provided. With Book Creator, we can do our own, upload our own. Okay, so let's just take a look really quickly. So, you can create, read, and publish, because isn't that something we want our kids to be able to do on their own without us standing around? So if you're not familiar with Book Creator, 
Let me give you just a little snapshot quickly. If we can get it to load. And having our students become their own content creators is really our desire, correct? So they can add text, they can manipulate the text, and really make a really fun book, okay? So I want you to try it out when you get back. So, oops. let's recap really quickly. We use Flipgrid, Insert Learning, Auto Draw, Museum Ed, and Book Creator. And I want to give credit to one of my colleagues, Jennifer Gonzalez. She inspired me to do the presentation. She has a great blog. Take a look and see six ed tools to try in 2018. I didn't include the sixth one. But she goes through in much more detail than I can right now exactly why she likes them as an educator. Okay? So check it out. And I want to thank you so much for coming.